EV charging stocks just can't get any love from investors right now. A couple of weeks ago, EV charging equipment provider Beam Global reported better than expected results. Sales came in at 17.8 million, up about 380% year over year, and higher than the 13.5 million analysts had projected. Beam isn't profitable yet, but the company reported a per share loss of 32 cents, a little better than the 34 cent loss. Right now in pre-market for Monday, the stock is up roughly 40 cents. Before we continue with the analysis, let's look at this video from Yahoo as the CEO talks about the EV infrastructure capacity in the U.S. Well, being global closing higher today, the sustainable EV charging solutions company reported its Q1 revenue on Monday that increased 240 that increased 245 percent year over year to 13 million dollars, beating consensus estimates of 8.34 million. You see the stock up more than five percent today. For more on a breakdown here, let's bring in Desmond Wheatley, Beam Global Chairman, CEO, and President. Uh, Desmond, we should point out some of your competitors, at least in the charging space, all down, whether that's ChargePoint or Blink in the session today. Um, you've kind of had the perfect storm over the last year when you think about higher gas prices, more awareness on EVs, and so many, so much build out, especially with the IRA in terms of the infrastructure. To what extent do you see being able to sustain that momentum? in face of what's happening today, whether it is gas prices coming down or consumers being a little more cost conscious? I actually, we're seeing nothing but uh, more and more growth and more acceleration of growth in our future. In fact, I, I don't see any end of it for, for many years to come. Uh, we are definitely looking at electrification of transportation. Uh, our products, actually, we don't compete with the EV charging companies. We support all of them because our products just provide a form of infrastructure that just requires no construction, no electrical work. You never get a utility bill. And crucially, we continue to charge electric vehicles during blackouts or brownouts. Uh, this is, of course, uh, very important in Europe as well at the moment where people are uh, very concerned about energy security after what's going on in Ukraine and with Mr. Putin. But uh, nothing but growth ahead of us at the moment. But uh, Desmond, Diane here, your business hinges on EV adoption. And there was this expectation that we'd be further along with regard to uh, electric vehicles. For instance, I don't have one yet. I do want one eventually, but we've seen some data recently, as Akiko has talked about, uh, with people holding on to their gas-powered vehicles longer. What is your expectation? What are you preparing for in terms of the road ahead for EV adoption? Uh, better than half of our uh, revenues come from government sources. We know that the federal fleet is going to electrify it, all of its 645,000 vehicles uh, by 2035, and in fact, all of its light duty vehicles by 2027. Uh, we're, I think the infrastructure has to come first, honestly. I, I, one of the big reasons that people are not adopting electric vehicles is because they're concerned about range, of anxi range anxiety and lack of infrastructure. We're in the business of providing that infrastructure very quickly, as I said, without construction or electrical work. So uh, we're solving a problem which, frankly, uh, is massive. I mean, it's a massive opportunity, uh, but we're going to have to build out all the charging infrastructure in the next couple of decades. And I think that will probably require something in the order of 60 million publicly available plugs um, uh, to fully electrify the United States. So it's a huge opportunity. Uh, Desmond, to, to, to pick up your point earlier, uh, you do differentiate yourselves because you don't necessarily need to power to the grid as opposed to some other charging stations in terms of how Beam operates. Are you finding that increasingly cities, governments are thinking about this differently? In other words, it's not just about building out the charging stations. It is about thinking about this more holistically because the resources are still limited when you think about the overall infrastructure. You know, we have a strategic petroleum reserve, which is a very good idea. That's to ensure that we never run out of diesel or, or gasoline for our, for our ground transportation. But there's no strategic electric reserve. In fact, we're at capacity in many of the markets in which we operate. Uh, uh, New York City is our biggest municipal customer. Everybody knows that there during August, if the, everyone turns up the air conditioning, the the, the power gets turned off with the well, Same thing over here in California where we are. So uh, adding capacity to the to the to electrical infrastructure here, the way we do it, which doesn't require a connection 
connection to the grid, although all of our products can connect to the grid, um, is going to be essential. And I can tell you that what we're starting to hear in the halls of Washington, D.C. and other parts of government across the, the country is that probably at least 25 percent of all charging infrastructure should be locally generated and locally stored electricity, not connected to the grid, um, and so that we reduce the vulnerability we have to centralized failures. We know that the Russians have hacked the grid. We know the Chinese and the, and the Iranians have done so. Uh, so we need to have charging infrastructure that's immune to those sorts of failures. And that's exactly what we're providing. And that begs the question, Desmond, why we aren't seeing more of your product out there. What would you say is, is the biggest challenge right now in being able to scale up in a bigger way? Yeah, I mean, there's no doubt that in the first 10 years that we were doing this, it was all about education. Uh, people were really not very sure about electric vehicles, and they were even less sure about the idea of driving on sunshine, which is what we are enabling uh, people to do. But I think you're seeing that changing very dramatically now. Obviously, the introduction of vehicles like Ford's F-150 Lightning, uh, I drive a Rivian, not to 60 in three seconds. It's just impossible to imagine a future where consumers will select slower, clunkier, more expensive to operate vehicles when they have these magnificent new uh gadgets to operate um, and uh, our ability to provide charging infrastructure very rapidly very scalably removing all the uncertainties and cross variations of construction and electrical work uh, it seems to me it's just a very important thing to be doing and it's a, a thing that's come of, of time again we've been doing this for a decade but it's only right now you can see the extraordinary growth that we're having 548 percent year over year growth in orders 245 percent year over year growth in, in in revenues and absolutely no end in sight to this so i suppose our time has come and now the recognition is there you're really seeing us take off yeah i will say as an ev driver myself in california where there is the most concentration of chargers it still doesn't feel like there's enough chargers really to meet those ambitious targets on ev adoption uh, desmond it's always good to have you on the show beam global's desmond wheatley there all right so we're going to start with the monthly chart and we can see that EV had a high of roughly seventy six dollars back in December of 2020 and since then it's just been a straight downward spiral and for the month of August like the equity markets in general the stock is down roughly three and a half dollars However, looking at the monthly chart, you can see that there is a floor at the $4 level, which is another 50% down from current price. We're going to see if there's any levels of interest between current price and $4 on the smaller time ch charts. We're going to go to the weekly chart. And right now we just see this leg down origin happens to start mid-July and I don't see any levels of interest this is a nice price structure but there's no volume so I do want to mark that level off and go down to the daily chart yeah nothing Yeah. All right, I'm going to take that off. And um, this is the only candle that had some substantial volume. All right, so here's the level. Let's zoom out. Let's see how this looks on the higher time frame. All right, so bigger picture. If price declines, another 30, 40%, 50%. 
this would be a good area to go long but wait for a some type of reversal pattern on the lower time frame price could close above the four dollars but the chart suggests that would be the bottom as you can see each time price came you had reaction you had a reversal so this will be a level of interest that I'll be monitoring moving forward. Thanks for watching. Subscribe. Please like the video.